I just saw Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. Joe has been telling me to go see Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier since he first saw it and said, this is the finest Marvel movie. We're at our best. Like, you trust me. I was like, Captain America 2, dude? Like, I like Captain America, but I don't know if 2 can possibly be. For me, the standard bearers of our Iron Man, the first Iron Man, I think is a fucking flawless movie. I've watched that <laughs> movie so many times now, and I'm not watching for flaws. But there are no fucking flaws. That movie is fucking it. It's one of those movies that you just feel everyone was like, I got something to prove. Yeah. I got something to prove. I got something to prove. And, be, and everyone loved the material. Everyone brought an A game. Not a single person fucking phones it in on that movie. And because of it, you have a classic, a timeless classic in the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm -hmm. is born. Yeah. Um, Avengers is a movie. I love the Avengers, man. Um, and, and, and it's it's an utterly watchable film. But and I'm not taking I'm, I don't want to raise anyone else to take away from anyone else. But you have to realize the difficulty of Iron Man. You're starting from scratch and you're hitting the ground with not Spider-Man, Marvel's most well-known character or the X-Men who weren't mainstream famous until those movies broke. They were in the cartoons in a big bad way. But like my mom didn't know fucking Wolverine. Now my mom knows what snicked means and not right. because of fucking Mallrats. It's just entered the mainstream, the lexicon. When you st when they announced Iron Man. I was like, wow, I don't give a shit about Iron Man. I don't care about Tony Stark. Never fucking gave a shit. Then they announced Robert Downey Jr. I was like, oh, well, that's fucking interesting. And then you heard about how, like, Favreau was fighting for Robert Downey Jr. And, they, and the, someone wanted to go younger and fucking they had screen tests for Robert Downey Jr. It's got a mythos to it. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's, it's Sisyphus pushing a boulder uphill, man. Like, that's beginning something. Then you got a bunch of other Marvel movies. By the time you hit the Avengers, man, all your backstory has been fucking told. So you get to jump into act two. You don't have to be like, uh, there was a man who came from a, a place called Asgard, which could be another planet or another dimension. We're not quite sure. Magic and science mixers. They've done that. You already fucking made that movie. So by the time you hit Avengers, the, the heavy lifting is done. All Joss Whedon and friends have to do is be fucking entertaining as fuck and give you a great story. And fuck if that team isn't capable of doing that. So the Avengers, wonderful movie, but is assisted by everything that happens from Iron Man up until that point. It's built on the very solid shoulders of what has come before. Captain America uh, 2, The Winter Soldier, the least likely for me to be, this is the next big Marvel move. And this is how I feel about this movie. This, this is by far, I feel like it stands shoulder to shoulder with Iron Man. If I see it a few more times, I bet you it might actually climb a notch or two above. Now, it's to say it's the best Marvel movie is one thing. I think this is a fucking X. This could go on the top 100 films as far as I'm concerned. Like, this is like all the president's men with action in it. It is so insanely fucking well done. Who are, who's, who fucking did this? I am not, I'll tell you right up, uh, same way I felt about Iron Man. Like, I don't give a fuck about Iron Man. I didn't care about Captain America. It's boring as fuck to me and shit. Sometimes in the comics, he's done well. Frank Miller, I thought, did him well once or twice. And when he put him in in uh, the uh, Daredevil, remember, with U.S. agent and shit yeah. like that. But to me, I'm, I'm not. It wasn't U.S. agent. What was the other? What was that? Um, who was the dude? Nuke. Nuke, yes. Well done. Fucking. Yeah. Thank God the Marvel Man's here. Um, but you know, Ken, isn't that the case with, with so many characters? I mean, I mean, look, I mean, you know, Batman went through a really, really, really big dry spell, right? Where, where he became really, really boring, really, really campy until Frank came around and reinvented him and didn't really invent him, just reinvented, but really sort of brought it back to his roots, right? Mm -hmm. Made him interesting again. All these characters go through the same thing. I mean, we can say the thing about Superman, right? Superman gets really, really boring, but all he needs is somebody to come in and go, wow, I got, I got the idea. I got the spark. I got the juice, right? And all of a sudden you go, you sit, you'll be sitting here talking about, wow, man, you know, that, that the greatest character of all time. I didn't care about him, but now I do. Excellent. So point. you just gotta, you just gotta find that thing. And, and, and I think, you know, when Ed Brubaker took over Captain America, you know, for the longest time, we were trying to find a way to make Captain America a really compelling, interesting character. And I think it starts there with the roots in the comics. So, uh, this is under your editorship at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's I, go back there because the movie don't happen without the the comic. Because I the, mean, I I think the, I think I think what you see here with Captain America and Winter Soldier, I think a lot of this, you know, it, it really comes from Ed Brubaker, Steve Epting, Tom Brevoort, who was editing the book at the time, mm -hmm. and 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 Ed's vision for for Captain America, where Ed really turned it into sort of this born identity espionage, you know, uh, Tom Clancy esque kind of thriller kind of world that Cap lived in. Uh, I mean, th those are Ed's roots. You know, he's got those noir roots, those 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 Tom Clancy roots. Ed is a, a phenomenal writer, phenomenal writer, and 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 uh, 
And, and the beauty about Ed's writing is he, it, it reminds me a lot of Garth's Garth Ennis writing, right? Mm. Where where when you start reading, you know, sometimes you read a, you read a, a writer's work and you're very cognizant of like, oh yeah, I I I I could sense the writer in the work. I know who the writer is. When Garth writes something, sometimes. I lose track. I, I'm just in the story, and I, and I, and I, especially when Steve, when when, when he, when he and 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 uh, Steve Dillon are working together, and in, in, in those wonderful old, you know, preacher books, and 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 when they were at their height and Punisher, you lose track. You're just in the story. You don't know where the writer is, where the artist is. You're just in it, and you you don't hear voices or see the art. It's just one piece. Same thing with Ed. You know, you don't you don't, you don't hear Ed's voice. You just it's a story, man. And 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 when Ed is at his best, that's what you sort of get. Um, and he created this new world for Cap and he created this Captain America that was so gosh darn compelling where, you know, it's a tough character to write. It's a guy that wears the flag, right? And so, so it's kind of like the Superman problem. I mean, Captain America was always a little more compelling because it's like, he used to be like you and me, a super soldier searing him up, but he ain't fucking unkillable as we found out. At one point. Right. But, 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 but I would argue also that, that, that he suffers from the exact same things because he wears the American flag. And, 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 and when you, and, and in some cases that that's even tougher because that flag means something different to everyone. Right. Excellent. So right. like, 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 you know, my, my, my dad wasn't born in this country. Right. But my dad was, my dad came to this country and fought in a war. So when he sees that flag, or when he saw that flag, it means something completely different to him than it means to me as, as a, a firstborn, you know, in this country who didn't fight in a war. And, you know, so I had different, you know, I have different feelings when I see that flag than when he saw it, than when my grandfather saw it. Everybody has a different feeling about that flag. And that's that just flag. here. And that's just country, here, right? Yeah. And then you go abroad, right? So, so, so Cap suffers from that, right? So, 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 you know, you have, you, 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 you walk that line of like, how do you write this character? How do you write this character without being jingoist, you know, too jingoistic, too po- political? You know, how, how can't you- always be like the American way. And just like and, over right. su- at DC, Superman, at one point, they made a big deal about like, he ain't going to say the American way anymore. Right. And, 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 and you know, and, and then you're, you know, you're dealing in a, in a, in a red hot, you know, political climate, right? There's right and there's left and there's, there, there's very little middle. And, and then there are pe- Fox I, News is like, they're taking Superman and raping him and he's no longer right. for America. And, that's the beauty of what Ed did. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, Ed, you know, every once in a while, I mean, he, he ran into, into one political snag once because there were some signs in the background of one politi- one particular scene that it wasn't even his issue. It was a letterer's issue. And, but outside of that, he did an amazing job with Cap where he didn't make it about politics. He made it about Cap the man and what was in the heart of Steve Rogers. Uh, you know, which, which is really what the story is about, right? And, and, and that's where the movie goes. And the first movie talks about, I think there's this, there, there's, there's a great line in the first movie where Dr. Erskine says, so you want to kill Nazis or something like that, right? And Steve says, no, I don't want to kill anybody. Uh, I just don't like bullets, yes, right? Which was the, and, uh, that was the highlight moment of that movie. And that, and that was it, right? And, and, and there, there are subtleties in Captain America 2 that I think, you know, and you'll see these as you as you watch the second and the third time, things that are added to Steve that, again, to me, he's not very different than Clark Kent or Superman. And and but 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 there are things that, that we do with the character that that make him so endearing, but at the same time, not a pussy. Right. Mm. But there's a again, spoiler warnings, guys, if you haven't seen the movie stop this right now okay because we're gonna and if you haven't seen the movie we're gonna get deep into this movie yeah. fucking balls deep so make sure you've seen it and then come back and listen and if you haven't seen it shame on you it's it's comic movies finest hour yeah. if dark knight was like the uh godfather two of comic book movies captain america may very well to me and this means a lot because i love all the president's men is all the president's men of comic book movies added to the hunt for red October. <laughs> like, and those are two of the most watchable fucking movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And it, it feels like when I watched that movie in the, in the cinema yesterday, I felt like, my God, they found a way to make a popcorn movie that made me feel smart, not dumb while watching it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, this sounds stupid to say, I didn't see some of the plot twists coming. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I read comics and I'm familiar with, uh, I, but there's some shit I didn't, but what were you going to say? Well, you were there's, there's, there's a very, Small moment, and, and to me, I think it's seminal to to to, to the character, right? Where where S- Steve and Natasha, the Black Widow, mm. have escaped, uh, you know, out of the mall where where the, where the strike team was looking for them, and 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 they've stolen a car, and it's Steve who's hot wired yeah, the car, and, and Natasha says, "I I 
I can't. Where, where did Captain America learn how to steal a car? And he talks about, you know, because Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany. I learned how to hotwire a car. And he says to her, feed off the dash. He goes, we're borrowing. He goes, by the way, we're borrowing the car. Borrowing so the car. Feed, feed off, off the, the dash. dash. Right? And I'm like, that, that, tell, it's yes. right there, you know, it's like, this is an honorable guy. Mm. Even though he's stolen this car, it's for the greater good. But hey, get your feet off the dash. Right? <laughs> right. This is somebody else's property. Yeah. And then she turns to, and they, they have that little, she has, she's asked that question. She's like, you know, I can tell by the way you're going to answer or you don't answer. And she says that thing, you know, because she, they just kissed, right? For, she had to, there's a moment on the uh, on the escalator yeah. where to hide their identities, they kiss. She's like, public displays of affection make people nervous. Kiss me. So she kisses and the guy's right. looking for a look away. And she's like, is that not the first kiss you've had since, you know, 1940 something? And, and he, you know, stammers a little bit. He's, he's like, he's like, no, he's like, you know, I'm 90. I'm not dead. Yeah. And at that moment, how do you not fall in love with this guy? Right. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and that's the other trick about Cap, right, is that it's very, you know, he's man out of time. And, and, we, and we struggled with this. We, we talked this, about this a lot at the Marvel Creative Committee. You know, you, you want to make sure that while he is man out of time, you don't want to make him a young 30 old fogey. We're like, oh, what's this computer thing here right. in front of him? He's still, you know, he, he has an iPhone. He knows how to handle it, but he's catching up, right? So there's that moment where he's the got notebook the notebook li- moment is the list, fantastic. Right? You know, I mean, he he gets tech. Right. He's not an idiot. Um, but at the same time, and he's not completely out of touch, but you can use those moments to get a little bit of humor out of it. Yes. You know, the, the the thing about his barbershop quartet being dead and all the those The War Games things. joke was, I thought, hysterical. Yeah. She's like, shall we play a game? Yeah. And she's like... It's a movie that was pop. She cuts her off. He's yeah. like, I've seen that. I've seen it. <laughs> so, so it's it's having fun with that, but at the same yeah. time, not being a slave to it. And, and I, so, so there are ways around it. And, and I think those are all things that were really set up beautifully in 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 Ed's run and in the way that that that, that Ed, uh, Steve Epting, they designed and created the Winter Soldier and and, and just just all. Let's those- take it to there. So sure. you bring in Ed. And you go, hey, man, I want you to take over Cap. Or did he come to you going, I want to take over Cap? Uh, th- th- and he had been at Gotham Central at this point. He was somebody it, it, poached it, from it, DC. It, admittedly, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember if, if Ed if Ed wanted to write Cap, if we asked Ed to write Cap. I, Ed probably wanted to write Cap. I, 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 I'm I having trouble remembering which came first. So, How so, deep into his Cap run is Winter Soldier? What was that? How deep into his Cap run is Winter um, Soldier? Again, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to look it up. I have a terrible memory for these things. The only thing I do remember was that that there was one point we were having a a, a discussion, and I and I uh, challenged the room because you know we, every once in a while we'll we'll be in these writers' rooms and and we'll challenge each other and I, and I said you know I th- I think that we can bring Bucky back from the dead and and there mm. were there were a couple of older Marvel editors who went <gasps> gasp you know and, for those unfamiliar with the yeah. Marvel U or Marvel Comics universe because a lot of people are like I know Marvel from the movies now but. In comics, there was this, you know, the old uh, saying, perhaps, um, two people that are never going to come back from the dead. Um, it was, well, there's been mar- many variations, but it used to be Gwen Stacy and Bucky. Mm. Then, of course, there's a there. There are some people that definitely can't come back, like Peter's parents. No, it was it was it was, it was Gwen Stacy. There was mostly Uncle Ben. Really, was but I never. That's, yeah, there's yeah, that was, one. It's like you can't do a single story. It was never. It was never Uncle ben Bucky. That, that's the whole thing. That's why I challenged the room because I, I I said you know Bucky was never the death of Bucky to me was never interesting. Like like you can't bring Uncle Ben back from the dead. Otherwise, okay? Spider Man doesn't be Spider Man. It, it just yeah, it's 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 like bringing. Bruce Wayne's parents back yeah. from the dead. You just, you I'm just, happy now. Yeah, just you just don't you just you take you take away the essence of the character and why essence for being uh, the superhero. So, but to me, the death of Bucky was not instrumental in Captain America becoming Captain America. It's just a casualty of war. It's right. a sidekick that died. Um, so why not bring him back? And and so it, it astonished me that over all these years of publishing. That nobody decided to ever bring Bucky back. Somehow or other, over that time, it became, you know, a sacred cow that no one wanted to touch. And we started talking about it. And you know, at first, I think I think Ed was just like, well, wait, wait, wait I, I don't know, can we bring that back? And as we started started talking about it, I think it also dawned on Ed, that like, yeah, there's no reason that this doesn't affect Cap in any way, shape, or form. How did he die in the comics? Do you remember? Um, in the comics, it was, uh, there was that missile launch. Was it, was it? Uh, it's the same missile launch that like where Cap gets frozen? Uh, yes. And yes. that's where he and Bucky got separate. So mm-hmm. Bucky made it with him to the end of the line. Yes. Yes, basically. 
uh, and Cap gets frozen. I, I think it was Zemo that launched it, or one of those one of those Nazis launched it. Uh, um, and uh, so that, but that that was it. It was it was just in trying to save Bucky that he froze. But it has so really nothing changes, right? right. If you bring Bucky back from the dead, so and then I think remember like in the nineties, like was it Fool Killer or there was some book that was tangentially tied to Bucky had been this guy and he grew up to be this guy or the second Bucky. Fuck, I can't remember. Yeah. Walter would remember, but they, it's not, you're right. It wasn't all that fucking sacred a cow. Yeah. And, but and, nobody had done it because they were like, well, you know, fucking it's charming part of Cap's story. And also kids' sidekicks, with the exception of Robin, were kind mm -hmm. of by the wayside. Yeah. And then, but then from that point on, man, it was all Ed. It was all Ed and Steve Epting. Ed took that idea. And ran with it and created this idea of the Winter Soldier and and this Manchurian candidate and this guy that's been around forever and just you know goes into deep freeze and is unfrozen and then and then sent off to 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 do these assassinations and then and then just gets put back into deep freeze and disappears. Uh, and uh, and Steve created the look and and then we were off and running and 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 then the big surprise that it was Bucky. Uh, and and literally what you see on the screen today and that's that's basically what ed and steve created i mean from the look to the to the to the temperament to the everything about the character is 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 really what was what was created and uh uh i think it's a testimonial to to what these guys did in the comics ed know? is one of the scientists in the movie i saw in the credits yeah, yeah um i don't know if the other one was the other guy was it mm. no i don't think steve said it no um the uh so okay what about the what's his name um uh, zolar was that in the comics uh, what's it? Is the the guy who's like I have downloaded my well, uh, Aranzola? Yeah, yeah. He's he's a, well. He he's, did he's they a, do that in the comics as well? He's an he's a classic Marvel. I, that yeah. I know, but did they he do the like I downloaded my consciousness into? Uh, that's so it, captured my fucking imagination. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a it's there is a version. It's a different version of that. Z Zola is sort of like this big robotic. Uh, he's a big robot who's got a television head. You right, know, so right, right. He's, he lives in the yeah. But in the when in Ed's run, did they? retcon it to a, a gigantic fucking war games like room where no not not that i can remember no that that's that's something that was love uh, that piece yeah. man it was such a like oh yeah i guess that would have been in 1970 <laughs> it's like acres and acres of fucking da data yeah. style uh storage um okay so it's very popular in the comics this when they did the winter soldier story oh, yeah, the, the winter soldier story went uh went, went through the roof it, it did really really well and let me add i mean when Ed took over Captain America, I mean, you know, Captain America was just a, a comic that did okay. Right. You know, it did so-so. Uh, and it really, really started to pick up. And then it really started to pick up even more uh, after Civil War. And then, of course, you know, spoiler warning, the, the death of Captain America. Uh, and then uh, having Bucky uh, or Winter Soldier take over as Captain America. So he was Cap while Cap was dead. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing, again, is that that, that Ed did such a... You know, there was a huge fear that, you know, well, now we're not going to have Cap in the book um, and it's going to be Winter Soldier while well, sales are going to plummet. But Ed wrote the hell out of that book and sales maintained and actually went up. And and I remember um, I re re like a seminal moment. I, I, th I think it was either New York Con or San Diego Con where I might have done this at both conventions uh, after after Bucky had been Captain America for a while. And I and I, and I did a cup of Joe and I said to the audience, OK. Folks, I mean, because because of course everybody was like, "Well, you got to bring Captain America back in two or three months," and it had been a while now, uh, and he hadn't been back. And I said, "Okay, so let me ask a question to the audience: How many people want to see Steve Rogers back? Fifty percent. How many people want to see Bucky remain? Fifty. It was fifty fifty down the middle, and I was like, "Wow, that is pretty amazing," uh, and just showed you how well Ed wrote those characters were the fact that that people fell in love with bucky cap and you gotta uh, think about it, a lot of people for a lot of kids bucky cap was their first cap yeah. and will always be their first cap yeah. and maybe they're in the minority left for everyone else like hey it's steve rogers for me but it's like i don't know when i started reading comics yeah bucky had taken over his cap so that will always be my cap. Yeah. like there are cats that talk about when morrison wrote dick as batman yeah they're, they're like, oh, my God, that's my Batman. Like, yeah. I wish it would go back to that kind of thing. All right. So the comic is successful. When they when Marvel, when the cinematic universe, what do we have? All right. So you call there's the create Marvel Creative Committee. Mm -hmm. There's Marvel film, should we call it? Or what do they call Marvel it? Studios? Marvel Studios. Yes. So when Marvel Studios starts building the cinematic universe and they know they're like, we got to get to Avengers. So we got to set up every character. 
who writes Captain America: The First Avenger? Uh, writing team of Marcus and McPhilly. Marcus they, and they, McPhilly. Yeah, they write adorable the adorable name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, these guys are these guys are phenomenal. Did and, they uh, write the second one? They wrote the second these one. These guys, well. if these guys don't win the Academy Award or at least a nomination <laughs> this year for best original screenplay. Fuck that organization. I'm, and I'm not even just like, that's not yeah. like a comic book fan talking. That's a guy who's watched movies for 43 years. And you know, you, you know what they can hear? There's no reason on earth. Okay. Maybe some old school writers like, I'll never nominate a goddamn comic book movie. This is based on previous material. So it's adapted. There's no fucking reason on earth. This screenplay, unless something better comes out mm-hmm. this year, shouldn't win best adapted screenplay i got a movie coming out this year even if they were like look tusk could be on that list you got to pick either you or tusk or cap i would be like give it to fucking cap that movie it works so fucking let me tell you these these guys are so amazingly talented i i had the pleasure of of sitting in the room with them during uh the writing of cap one Uh um you know the the i sat with them for a day um working on some some ideas for the red skull uh, and they're just, they're, they're two young guys. They're really, really smart. They work really, really well together. Uh, they understand the, the Marvel DNA through and through. Mm. And I will tell you, you know, as, as a member of the creative committee, you know, we, we, we get to see, you know, the, 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 the initial briefs from the movie when they come through, then, you know, the, the initial outlines and then the, you know, every draft of the screenplay, um, from the outline to to the, the very first rough draft of this screenplay, we could have filmed that first draft of the screenplay. It was that tight mm. already. It was it was out of you know out of every draft that we've gotten of every screenplay we've ever gotten. That to me was like I was like wow this, you know, sure there's a nip in an air to tug and there's some mm. like wow that, that I see is, the whole picture right here. Th- this is this is this is going to be an amazing movie and I, you know I, I, you know and I we've been talking amongst ourselves internally at Marvel, obviously, because, you know, we, we, you know, we're, we're incredibly secretive. Um, but, you know, I was just telling people this, this is, this is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It is, it is an amazing, amazing screenplay that these two guys wrote. Uh, and they, they just, they just nailed it with, with, with Steve, with the, with the winter soldier and, uh, and the whole universe of it all, you know, and, uh, and, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's sort of a, it really is sort of a mini Avengers movie. I mean, when you've got you've got you know the introduction of the Falcon, Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. Cap, Fury, Natasha. It felt like a comic book, Agent Thirteen. I mean, but got, in a good you know, way. Like yeah. I don't want people think, thinking that's dismissive. It felt like I, I as I watched that movie, I had the distinct impression or feelings that I used to have while reading a comic book, knee deep in the run of my love of comic books, where I'm like, I know so much about these worlds that you can whip a character in and I'm ready to fucking go. And if you're introducing a new character, you're going to give me a bunch of information anyway. It felt like that. Yeah. At, while at the same, it was the closest experience I've ever had in a movie theater to read in a comic. And I know someone will find some way to make that dismissive, but I don't mean that dismissive. Like yeah. that's the but sheer I, joy. Like they never get it right. There's always some fucking I, part that's broken. This was not, this yeah. was like, you could take anybody, the last holdout critic who's like, comic books are for kids, you fucking child. You could take them to this movie and be like, come on, dude. Like, you know, I know, like, when I showed you the Joker picture with Dark Knight, that was compelling evidence. But this puts the nail in your fucking you know, coffin of your argument. This is based on a comic book. This is all straight out the fucking yeah. page. Like, yeah. and it's that adult and grown up and a kid could fucking enjoy this. And his grandfather could fucking enjoy it. And it's not this like bullshit Wizard of Oz family entertainment. It's a little complex, man. And it's no, about it's, some it's, shit. It's, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, deep, deep down in its core, it's about stuff that's going on right now. Right? Bingo. Right. But I, I, I also think, look, let's, let's, we, you know, we're going to have to talk about the Russo brothers, too, because because you know, uh, so that was my next question. Right? These guys. These Who guys. are they? What did they do? <laughs> you imagine I would have done homework before this. But what, where listen, did they come from? You know, listen, you know, these are guys, these guys, you know, you've seen Community, right? You know, they they, they did they, Community they did Community. I mean, they, they've they've also, you know, they've, they've, they've directed before. But but these guys are they're they're brilliant i mean and and they're it's beautiful you know, looking movie. it's a beautiful looking movie and i, I got well shot you, excellent composition you, those opening scenes of him fucking running around washington well, let's talk, like i want to talk about that because because i i looked at, i'm like man if i was going to teach if i was going to teach a class on whether it's film or just just storytelling mm-hmm. those i have to time it i don't know if it's the first two minutes three minutes of that movie but you want to talk about 
um, an introduction where you immediately fall in love with the three, your three heroes in your cast within mm. the first however many minutes of a movie that is mm. and feel patriotic and everything. I mean, you open up on that wide shot of Washington, right? At pool. dawn, the reflecting pool with that, that, that slight symphonic Tom Clancy mm. patriotic music yeah. and that lone guy jogging. And then on your, on left, your left, right. And, oh, and you're like, you're, like, you're like, what the hell is that? Right. And you, and you're feeling that swelling in your chest. And then the second on your left, makes you giggle a little bit You're like okay what's going on here mm. and then again and then you meet these two guys and you're immediately like there's a ebony bro <laughs> and ivory there's a bromance oh. there right I, all you want to see is 96 movies about a uh, cap and falcon right. together and then the widow pulls up in that car mm. and she's like what's up boys yeah and you're like let's party for all those uh, uh, middle Americans who are like, I'm uncomfortable with this bromance. They mean like, look, there's a girl. Don't worry about it. And everybody's <laughs> OK, then let's go have an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> it is. A, it's a wonderful opening to the movie. And it, it's 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 you're, you're right. You're, you're, you you're, love every one of those in. characters. And and you know what's what's funny? Um, my daughter uh, uh, a couple of days ago asked me, uh, said, Dad, can can uh, can you uh, can you buy me the soundtrack to Cap? I'm like. Really, I mean, she she's for for she really she she loves soundtracks, mm -hmm. to, uh, but she's really selective. I'm like, really, Cap? She's like, yeah, Cap. And uh, and I've never listened to just a soundtrack alone, uh, and not because I want your your, your dollars, Cap, but do yourself a favor, download do it. Yeah, it's, it it's, wasn't it's, Sylvester. It was the first one. Who did this one? You don't know the people who scored. Uh, uh, I noticed. Uh, you know, I'm watching the credits. Uh, Wallace, uh, what's his first name? Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna draw a blank. It was excellent score. Look, it's, everybody. Score. There's no weak spot links or spots in this it's, fucking movie. Everybody brought an A game to yeah. it. Um, after that charming opening, man, they throw you yes. into an adventure right the fuck away. Mm -hmm. Um, boom, you're on that jet. We've all seen it from the trailer at this point where he's having the conversation. Well, first there's a mission op. They're about going after some pirates. Then uh, he has that back and forth with Black Widow about you should call the girl in accounting. He's like, yeah. can't busy, busy and just jumps out the plane. And then the guy goes, did he just jump out without a parachute? And the other guy's like, yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Right away, you're like, oh, my God, you're, you're fucking glassy eyed. You're like, oh, I'm in. I'm fucking out at the edge of my seat. You watch him descend. Bam, into the ocean, then boom up the chain. Mm -hmm. And then you watch a, a dazzling display straight out of comic book. Yep. He just beats the fuck one by one, quietly, stealth, yep. um, across the deck of a boat and, and goes into full cap action. Yeah. And the, th and the thing that's cool about all that action is that none, none of it looks CGI no. rubber, rubbery. It all, it all, you know, it's all real world. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you could tell this is a guy who's got skills and has some superpowers and he's running pretty fucking fast. Yes. But it doesn't look out of the ordinary, mm -hmm. bizarre. Like, okay, I can see that. That I can see the seams here. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's just again, I, I, I you know, we're all really, really, really proud of the movie and, and what everybody at Marvel Studios did, you know, to to, to put this thing together. This entire opening action sequence. I, I mean, I can't remember if they did the title at that point or if this was all pre-title. They do big MOA uh, MO uh, main on end credits with a, mm -hmm. a great title design, but smartly but wisely they get you right into the fucking yeah. picture and whatnot so once they have their opening adventure um you're already hooked you're like man there's fucking right on this is a way to start a goddamn picture uh you you immediately like steve rogers more than you've liked him in any incarnation yeah. uh, like the first movie which he was he was lovely in that movie when he says i hate to say bullies uh and in avengers i think he was great too but this time around, you're like, fuck, Cap, Cap is charming. Yeah. And you're only five, maybe eight minutes into the picture. They got you already. Let me tell you when they fucking put in the claws and like take you with them, they'll never let you go. And you will fucking love this movie till the end of time. And it makes sense now that you're like, oh, the guys that wrote the first one wrote this one because there's so many fucking tie ins. Like Captain America, the big complaint a lot of people seem to have was like, uh, it was 80% of a movie and then fucking all of a sudden it was all set up for Avengers and shit. They didn't have enough time to just keep going. They felt like the montage of his action adventure and shit like that was tight. It felt like there was a shit ton of movie to pack into that and it was kind of preparatory and stuff. But these guys answered and touched on everything 
that was left unto almost everything, which you know is going to, I don't believe the Red Skull's gone sooner or later. I'll come back. But they touched on so many fucking threads from the first movie and not in the way of somebody who's like, I will dutifully honor the shit people liked in the first movie now that I am right in the second, even though I didn't write the first. This was done in a way with love and affection. The same parent to that first picture wrote this picture. Um, it was almost like you have two kids and the first one you're like, all right, fuck, I, know, I, I, I learned from all my mistakes in the second one. Now I can raise that one into a better human being. And a bunch of first kids out there are like, fuck you. A bunch of middle <laughs> kids know what I'm talking about. So there is there. There's this moment in the movie where I don't care. You got to be a fucking robot Cylon. You got to be Hitler himself. Baron von Strucker. Pick a fucking name. Cap goes to see Agent Carter. Yes. Now. Thanks. It played by what's her name? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm bad with this, but she's one. She was great. She was in the first movie. Yes. Is it her and makeup in the second yes. picture? So he goes to see her, and now this is a notion. I'm sitting there watching the scene, going, "Huh? I hadn't thought of that. I guess maybe she might still be alive." Like I always assumed yeah. at the end of Captain America: The First Avenger, he goes into the ice. She's upset and shit, and then he wakes up, and it's you know the present. And then in the Avengers, there was no real like sergeant carter or agent carter follow-up sergeant carter agent carter follow-up so suddenly you're struck with the notion of like she didn't die and they give you a little backstory in as much as she married had kids mm -hmm. she had a whole life and she talks to him about like you know i had a life you were right and by the way that, that's all like cgi on her too yeah i so I, I figured as much. yeah um because she's a stunning old lady. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean she is as you're looking at her she's got those young ass eyes yeah. where you're just like she ain't that old if there's a if there's a gray grass on the field, I'm still playing. <laughs> so she she is adorable, but but so there she is having a conversation, and I remember feeling like, oh man, like I hadn't thought of that. Like she would be, she might still be alive, and I said that's cute that he comes to see her, or maybe she's mm -hmm. going to die in this scene or something like that. But you know, he talks to her, and they have this. It sums up or ties up anything from the fucking first picture, and uh, it's just a great scene in and of itself. Then they fucking flip the switch and they yep. make it magic and they make it cinema and they make it a scene that you'll remember and to the end of your life because it's so powerful. And that's that's in a, and this is a scene without any fucking super heroics and no special effects whatsoever. Well, special effects in as much as they made her look old. They let her have Alzheimer's. Yep. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry just thinking about it. She <laughs> and all of a sudden she sees him again, even though he's been sitting there with her. And she fucking freaks and she's like, Steve, you're back. And she can't believe I can't. Oh, my God. I, where have you been? And blah, blah, blah. And you see it like he's been through this before. Like like any outside person with Alzheimer's, she has moments of clarity and then back into the loop. And he fucking, you know, she's just like, I can't believe you're here. And he's like, I, you know, I tied into the first movie. He says like that line about like, you know, it's. I couldn't not give my best girl, best girl a, yeah. a dance. Oh my God. I'm balling in the theater, dude. I look over at Jason Mewes and he's not very comfortable with emotions beyond like my dick is hard. And, and this is funny, <laughs> but he's sitting there glassy eyed too. Ralph Garman. We, he went with, we went with us as well. He's crying. It, and they, we're only 15 minutes in the movie and right away they're giving you some devastating character stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. Such a great scene. And again, I was watching the scene. And I was going, this is interesting. I hadn't thought she might still be alive. And they might have this kind of relationship where they chit chat and even more pain or drama for Cap to carry around. Like, this is the woman he, he was kind of into yeah. before he got frozen and shit. But flipping that switch and fucking making it like an Alzheimer's moment. Oh, yeah. It's just so much the poignancy that like Captain America has to carry that around. He's like, I missed her whole life, and and moments I get to talk to her, and then she gone. Well, it's funny because you know the, the first time I saw that scene with with, with Haley was, um, you know, it, it was without the CGI. You mm -hmm. know, so it's just it's just really so it's just her in bed. It's just, she's just she, it's just her with the with the gray wig, and she's looking absolutely. I mean, she she's gorgeous, breathtakingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, they, I mean, they're 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 pretty women, and then there's just breathtakingly beautiful women, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and she's a sweetheart to boot and she's sitting there, you know, in, in the scene and, you know, in, in, in the hospital clothes and the gray wig and, and, and she's doing the old lady voice and I'm sitting going, 
I don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> you know, without the CG. <laughs> and I'm like, I know it's good. It looks work. like kids doing a school play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ebenezer, you're being visited by old ghosts. And her performance is wonderful. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to imagine old lady, trying to imagine old lady, like, you know, give grandma a sponge bath kind of thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> And then, but then they did CGI, and it's just like, yeah, you're right. I mean, just, it's just, it's, it's such a beautiful moment because you know, you read it in the script, and you're like, wow, you uh, know, this, this is, this is gonna, this is gonna destroy people. Got um, punch. You had from that moment for look, I was in. Like, yeah. I was, what a hell of an opening it was. I was like, these motherfuckers know how to start a picture. But when that happens, I'm like, you can take me fucking anywhere. Yeah. Like, I'm. There is no disappointing yeah. me after this point because you just did something that I never expected to see in a movie like this. Yeah. That was so real. Like, I was talking to Muse afterwards, and he was like, like I even like the moments where, like, they weren't fighting and shit. And he's like, where'd they get goofy? I was like, what do you mean goofy? He's like, oh, they talk about stuff. And I'm like, the human moments? I was like, that's <laughs> what makes it compelling, dude. It's like, you can't just watch them be gods for two hours straight. What makes that watchable is that, you know, when fucking shit's not going on, they're like, hey, man, did you go out with that girl? Like, they're normal people. Like, that's not goofy. That's human and stuff. He's like, well, I'm saying I even like the human moments. Right. So I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so, all right. So right then and there, I'm like, you got me for the rest of this fucking ride. Let me tell you the shit that, like, little things that just popped for me. The mere mention of Stephen Strange got my dick card. Yeah, they, they threw it away where they're just like, you know, this fucking algorithm searches yeah. for people like like Bruce Banner or uh, Stephen the, Strange. Got just the, little, the little eye of Agamotto. Uh, uh, where? Where was that? Where? No, I'm just saying your little eye of Agamotto. I did. My yeah. Ag- I, I, thought there were, I thought you were saying there was in the background oh, somewhere. No, no. Um, oh, that means that it's coming. I, 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 I cannot say. I cannot deny. That's a cool fucking role, man. I'm I'm curious who winds up being Stephen Strange. And, oh, that's such a good dude. Think about it. Marvel can do the supernatural comic book world. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, Marvel's done terrestrial, and they've been the first to do – well, they're the first to do technological mm-hmm. with uh, Iron Man suit. Yeah. They're the first to do a, a team movie with the Avengers. Um they're the first to go to – well, they're not the first to go to space, but it looks like they're the first to successfully conquer the space comic book movie. Green Lantern fell apart, but it looks like Guardians well, is going to be we'll, fucking We're going to give it a shot. You know what I mean? We'll, uh... And then next will be fucking the comic book supernatural world. That's where Stephen Strange gets you, man. Then he gets into Mephisto. Neither Fisto. confirm nor deny. Oh, you piece of shit. So anyway, that reference was awesome. Um, the On Your Left was great, especially when it ties up fucking later on. Um, the the – the, the, I, there's a, I don't want it. Well, they already fucking know the, uh, the spoilers. This is a very spoilerific episode. That was the best portrayal and best performance by, of the character of Nick Fury of any of the movies. Like Nick Fury, rather than just the guy who comes in and says something cute or the guy who's like. Well, you got to see Nick really kick some ass. Or, or, and be a human being. Yeah. Like he actually like it. I mean, I don't know how else to say this. And, I, and this is not disparaging any other directors or anything like that. But it, f- it feels like the Russo brothers were like. That was great, Sam. Let's do another one just for the fuck of it. Like, it seems like a lot of times people are like, hey, it's Sam Jackson, man. So they let him do one take and fucking move on. And I honestly, as I watched that movie, I felt like he was fucking acting. Like, he was literally, like, being asked to to kind of give and did. It was a compelling performance. It wasn't just, right on, Sam Jackson's back playing Nick Fury. It's just like, look at all the fucking shades that he brought to, to Nick Fury this time. And again, I'm sure, Nick, I'm sure Sam Jackson would be like, look, when you got a script... That's what you can do and stuff. Uh, it was, he was, I thought he did such a great job. I, I just loved him shooting the machine gun. <laughs> right? Seeing him do shit and finding out backstory and he yeah. fucking shows you his eye. Yeah. There were so many fucking moments of the movie where you're like, holy shit, it's iconic. Yeah. There were, uh, the seeing the senator from, uh, what's his name, for, uh, from fucking Gary Iron Man. Shanley? Too, when Gary Shandling comes back, even that. <laughs> but this is a big fucking spoiler, man. And we're jumping about, around. But the thing I got Gary Shandling is that he shows up on screen. And it doesn't matter with what audience you see it with, whether you're in a private screening or in general audience. He doesn't have to say a word. People titter. People just start laughing. Yeah. He just shows up and people start laughing. He we love to, him. Doesn't have to say a word, you know. And then he then he opens his mouth and people start laughing hysterically. This yeah. is this is the one of the great gifts, and certainly not the greatest gift, but one of the top 100 gifts of Captain America to the Winter Soldier. Never imagined, never imagined in my lifetime. That I would ever, and this is a big spoiler, motherfucker, so don't get mad when you hear this. Cover your ears if you haven't heard or seen the movie yet. Never did I ever think I would ever hear Robert Redford 
<laughs> utter the immortal fucking this is how we knew the geeks have won and taken over the world dude when robert redford says hail hydra right <laughs> we've won dude that was amazing i was sitting in the theater i laughed out loud i cackled but not derisively just because i was like holy shit it's yeah. our world now not my world it's fucking marvel's world but in a world where you get like one of the most famous actors of all time to say something that kids have been saying out loud yeah. reading comic book page for years and he and he gives it the exact gravitas that requires not playing it archly he's as is it go hell this yeah. fucking drove me nuts i loved it i love the return of uh zolar yeah. as we said before i love the, the the fact that it was in new jersey of course fucking rocked but just the whole concept of it that scene the fact that he was back another tie-in from like the previous flick where you know at the end of the, that flick it was just like it, it they did it, cap went off got frozen mm -hmm. they didn't really track the rest suddenly you got a bit of backstory to that. And I loved his fucking like the missiles are coming. It is better this way. Mm -hmm. Captain, we are both <laughs> out of time. It was such a comic book scene. It dude. was. And I don't, and again, like some people be like, of course it was fucking a man talking to a, a computer with a brain. Johnny Depp's in a movie called transcendence. The fucking same thing. It's about to open next week. Mm -hmm. Like that's not just a comic book concept anymore, right. but it was an, 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 a uniquely comic book scene because there is captain America and there is the black widow. And there they are facing Zolar, the computer, the master monster mm -hmm. computer filling yeah. a full fucking room. Loved it. Absolutely fucking loved it. Cap shield got so much fucking screen time in this. It movie. did. Right. It, it, we got, we got, got, got some good shield action. Right. Let, and that's let, what you want. Cause yeah. it's just like how many things define Captain America. The shields yeah. like in the top fucking five and it did so fucking much. He used it in a, a variety of ways, not just to stop fucking bullets. The elevator scene, man, is tits. Come on. Like him. And you've seen it in the trailer where he's in the. No, you haven't seen the movie listen, yet. They're, they're where he's just like, before we get started. <laughs> right. Oh, was, it, that was a. It, you're right, dude. Like when you said Clancy at the beginning, I was like, fuck, you're right. It's Clancy. It's like, well, it's not Clancy. It's fucking Winter Soldier. But that's. It, it had all the elements of a fucking spy thriller and just happened to have a mask on it from time to time. Yeah. Speaking of which the fucking exhibit that they walk through the captain mm -hmm. america exhibit you talked about last time i couldn't help but think about this i'm watching the movie i was like because i had talked about the live marvel exhibit that people walk through and shit will they do shit like that where you will see that exhibit as you walk through uh you know you talk about the uh this which, like marvel live experience oh the 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 yeah there, there's there's the um the the Feld live action show, yeah, they they'll they'll probably be a, a like a meet and greet with characters. I don't know if it'll be exactly that, right? Uh, but I think there is there are things in the works. I, I don't know what's been made public yet, but there are probably things in the works where eventually you'll see stuff. I, see, I like remember this. reading something online where there was just like the Marvel experience where it it just it's like you walk through, but yeah, that's that, what that's, it that 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 that's another one. I don't know if it's quite exactly the same as this, but there, we've got a bunch of things in the works that that uh, that are sort of exhibit like uh, uh, experiences. So there were moments in the movie where some people would be like a uh, little boy wearing a cap shirt. You know, yeah. some cats would be like, come on, it's a fucking commercial. Fuck you. If you're in a captain America exhibit, you're wearing a captain yeah. America t-shirt. I love the fact that like, there is a fandom for the heroes in the Marvel universe, just like in the comics. Yeah. So they showed a kid and, and, and fucking, he sees Steve Rogers walking through his own exhibit and he fucking gives him the, shh, you know, and moves on. Come on, dude. That made me glass up. The other thing that made me glass up was, uh, you know, him not fighting uh, the the Winter Soldier at the end. Well, yeah. they all know. They him not fighting Bucky. He's like, I'm not going to fight you. You're my friend. He's like, you're my mission. He just punches him. Fucking bam, bam, bam in the face. And he he's could have like, broken Bucky's neck. Yeah. Oh, shit, son. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to get it in there. Fighting <laughs> words. No, actually, you know Not what? everyone can be a man of steel. Some nah, people you know are. what? That, that that actually, I, I that was something that uh, somebody just pointed me to an article online about that. About, what about about the difference? You know, between the two pictures, the two pictures, yeah, and, vast and, difference. You know, and 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 how you know can't the, judge though, unfortunately, because one is a yeah starts it, one's a sequel. Yeah, um, you know, and 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 how you know that there was a difference in the way that that, that Cap handled his arch nemesis. In this that movie. made me tear up though, where he was just like, you know, I'm, I'm your friend but, until the end of the line. Come on. But you know, again, that that's also part of part of that side of the Brubaker. Run, you know where, where a soldier you know, rescues Cap out of the water and stuff, and then and then sort of 
walks off into the into the ether kind of thing. And the helicarriers, is that something from Marvel Studios world? Yeah, that's the Marvel Studios world. They the, brought the, that yeah, That's the, to make it more cinematic. Oh yeah. And that was <laughs> dude, it was breathtaking. It, it really was. And yeah. it was kind and it was neat because What's better than one helicarrier? A fuck a fuck ton. Yeah, a metric fuck ton of a helicarrier <laughs> a takeoff, the the water, the yeah. uh, splitting, the lake and the, what is it? The whatever that body water is. Not the Potomac, because that would be a river, right? But where the where the Triskelion is based right. in Washington. That's where the – and seeing the Triskelion, dude, that was fucking tits. That's great. And then like – well, if they've made it this far. And then knowing their whole mission is like, we got to bring down the Triskelion, the, right. <laughs> the, the impregnable building. Yeah, well, yeah, we just built it. But it was spy versus spy. Yeah. Robert Redford was great. Um, fuck, it, what's his name? Um, um, and, uh, Anthony Mackie. I watch a whole – like that's – it's just smart because now I'll watch a whole fucking Falcon movie yeah, and they can take him, put him in a movie with someone else and mm -hmm. introduce that character. And, and all they need is these five. What are the two writers names? McFeely uh, uh, and Marcus and McFeely. Marcus McFeely. You put those dudes in charge of it, man. Write every fuck. Those dudes should write every script. <laughs> like seriously, I, yeah. that script was so I mean, also, fucking I, I, well written. I, I love their stuff. I really oh, do. I really do. They, they've written some other stuff for us too that, you know, I, I can't discuss here, but, um, uh, but they they are immensely talented. They really yeah. really are. And uh, and and yeah, and Anthony Mackie in, in in the movie was uh, again. I just I just think Project you know, Falcon. He oh. uh, yeah the Exo Falcon. The yes. Oh, and again, that's well, you know, so I, awesome. I just I just don't think you know. I mean, if you're if you're a fan, you know, of the Marvel stuff, you know, Even exactly. when he said his name, dude, when he was just like Sam, I was like, <gasps> I was reading comics in the seventies, kids. Like Captain Falcon, like that was like watching Falcon carry Captain America at one point. Where he was like, I need a lift. Like I've been, I saw shit like that in a comic book when I was a child. You never imagined a million years you would see that on a big fucking screen. Yeah. Captain America and Falcon team up, and there it is. And you're just like, oh my god, give me nine ninety six movies like this. And I'll see, for, I'll watch the, so many adventures for the Marvel fan who who knows he's going to be the Falcon and knows all about you know what's coming and stuff. Mm. And you get it, but I, th I think for the for the layperson who doesn't understand, and then when he says, I never said I was a pilot. Yeah, and then you know and they get the suit and he puts on the wings and it's just like whoa. Okay, and the so wings were badass. Yeah, the cool, way right? they functioned. I love the way they just folded up when he yeah. didn't want. He would like shut them down yeah. and then drop and then pff, pop them again, like when he's getting chased out of missiles. Yeah. Um, but the character is so well drawn. Like even mo moments where he's like, uh, he looks at him and he goes, "I do what he does, just slower." <laughs> yeah. And then they're on your left moment in the hospital, yeah, and was, like insta friendship, like a bromance, and and that's yep. and they stick together the whole fucking picture. And then Black Widow, probably the most effective use of Black Widow in any of the Marvel movies. And again, this in raising something up doesn't shit on something else. Yeah. And as time goes on, it just gets easier to perfect things. Yeah. But best Black Widow, like if she don't get a fucking solo movie off of this picture, who somebody's not man in the ship because it, clearly she can be compelling enough. Yeah. Um, in a movie that's not just like uh, her running from the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? Like, or Trick and Loki or something like that. Like, she was integral to the plot. Like, for a while, you were sitting there going, oh, fuck it, I got to turn her. And, like, how can they turn her? She's an Avenger and shit like that. But they do such a great game of spy versus spy and, and who's fucking over who. Um, They did some bold. I mean, if you've made it this far, you know. The fact that S.H.I.E.L.D. and fucking Hydra are mixed, dude, that was brilliant. Like, I loved that. I was sitting there going, all this time. Like when he said to him, like, I think it was Cat Black Widow was just like, you look pretty chipper for a guy who just realized he wasted his whole <laughs> life. His whole life was a waste or whatever. Because it's true. He gave his life to fucking stop Hydra and yeah. fucking they wound up within. They've been there all along. Oh, so I, I don't watch S.H.I.E.L.D., but it it must what? affect. I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a creative period right now. I ain't watching <laughs> shit except Mad Men and Walking Dead. But, you know, my stories. But I'm in a creative period where I'm I'm trying to output a lot of shit, so I don't sit around and watch all that shit. But I do know people like Ralph Garman watches it uh, mm -hmm. and digs it. He was just like, boy, they ended the season really strong. Uh, Patton Oswalt, mm -hmm. I, it was a big fan. I saw him yeah. on his Twitter feed as well. Um, but how does this affect the fucking show? Because, I mean, again, spoilers, yeah. you've been listening this far. Like, <laughs> how can Captain America, un uh, too, undoes, yeah. like, what you think of as, I wouldn't, as kind of the spine of the Marvel Universe, like, mm -hmm. S.H.I.E.L.D., we're, we're looking after yeah. the country. I mean, that, that that's what makes the S.H.I.E.L.D. show probably the most unique show on television, is the fact that, you know, like like the comics, right? I mean, you, you look at the comic universe, right? A every week, we have a new batch of comics to come out, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
you know, anybody who reads Marvel comics, reads comics in general, any universe that you're into, but in particular the Marvel universe, which is what we're talking about here, it, you know, it is it is a living, breathing organism of its own, right? Because every week, new artists and writers, artists and writers, are creating new stories that that feed the beast, that 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 keep the the universe alive and and change it in ways subtle and major, depending on you know what the week or what the stories are. Mm. Uh, the same can be said for the cinematic universe. The cinematic universe is a living, breathing entity of its own. And every time a new movie comes out, it changes. And every time, and S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show, lives within that organism. And it's the first adjunct to yeah. the movies. Yeah. Like, they and, haven't done anything outside the yeah, film, so, but now they got this TV show satellite. So anytime something happens in the movies, it alters things within the living, breathing organism that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it alters our TV show. And by the way, the TV show will alter things in the movies as well. So those And that character sit while he was on the TV show. Yeah, he was on the TV show, you know, just prior to Captain America. And, and there, there's a line in the TV show where they say, sit while you're, you're needed on the Lemurian star, and he takes off. And he, he and goes he to go, the movie. He goes, goes to the movie, and he's on the ship. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of cross-referencing back and forth. So you know, we've known this is happening for a long time. At least the, the writers and producers have known this is happening for a very long time. So, uh -huh. um, you know, we've we've been building towards it. Um, so, so yeah. So it, it's it's the kind of thing where uh, we know it's coming, and we know it's going to alter our show, uh, and we just prepare for it. And I think at the end of the day, it makes our show that much more. Uh, uh, of a, of an interesting show to write and to create. But for me, I'm sitting there watching this going, oh, this is year one of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. I know they started this movie either before or around the same yeah. time they started S.H.I.E.L.D. So as they start the TV show S.H.I.E.L.D., they're when like, so they know by the end of the season, they're like, everything we're predicated upon is going to go away. We knew the, the actors did. Really? Yeah. So was his name Clark Gregg was just like, I hadn't, is that his name? The guy who plays yeah, uh, Clark, Clark had no, Clark had to, as we got closer, Clark started to have his suspicions because mm -hmm. he, he knew some people, but most of the performers had no idea because, you know, we, we, again, we're, we're, we're trying, we want to make sure that we get the, the proper reactions as we, as we, as we do the show. So they didn't have any idea of what was going on. Um, and, and, you know, only those of us in the, in the know, as we were creating the show, we knew exactly by the time the season was going to be over, there was going to be no shield. So we were fully prepared for how this stuff was going to lay out. Um, how exactly all those things would shake out at the end, we were still sort of working it out and seeing how the cast would interplay with each other and things like that. So a few things were, you know, were still going to be tweaked by the time we got there, but we knew what the end game was. So, uh, so you can still continue the show because it's not called Shield; it's called Agents of Shield. Or oh no, we're, we're still going to continue the show. Yeah, as the, Agents of Shield. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 continuing. We have a plan. I can't tell you exactly what that plan is, but what but it is, doesn't include a title change. Uh, as of right now, no. Fucking evasive piece. As of right now, no. But but I but I can tell you that that it makes our show. I think it makes our show that much more interesting right? Um, because of the playground that we now are left with, which is Hydra has been shield all along. I mean, if you watched last week's episode of shield, you would have seen some, it, it, it was, it was literally, I think it was our best episode of, of the season, but last week's episode was, was to me the best episode we've done all season I saw that um, echoed online quite a bit and, by and, people that watch the show regularly and our fans mm -hmm. and people that watch sporadically. Because you had – it literally was one twist after the next. After You have no idea what was coming. And by the time you got to the end of the episode, you're like, did I just – wait, what just happened? You know Question, what I mean? Question, did – how come was – did something happen in the show to uh, – what is his name? The Clark Gregg's character, the agent. Uh, agent Coulson. Did something happen? Why wasn't he in Captain America? Not even like a brief kind of appearance because they had what Colby Smolder's character popped popped up. Yeah, Maria but, Hill. Yeah, yeah, but nothing. How is no, did Clark, something happen in the sh show that prevented? Uh, no, no, no. Just no need for him. No, he was. He just wasn't. Yeah, there, there was. You know, there was. There, there were enough characters in Captain America. No, it, it was dense, but not in a way where it was just like I don't know what's going on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, there was clearly one villain. Yeah. Um, well, one villain using another villain 
fucking Robert Redford scene with his fucking maid was awesome, dude. Yeah. Like, you don't expect to see that in a Marvel movie. That was so where he's just like, oh, I wish you'd knock. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, real good. Yeah. Winter Soldier looked cool. Arm looked cool. Yeah. Whole appearance looked cool. That's what he looks like in the books as well. Yeah. The mask and the yeah. eye thing. And I got to tell you, man. That arm looked badass, dude. It reminded you, me of like. It, it, it's funny. It's like, you know, you, you, you meet Sebastian. You, you meet uh, Sebastian and Stan? Uh-uh. He's uh uh you know he he's he's a, he's a great guy and and you see him on screen and he looks ginormous I mean mm. I mean he, lo- he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger you know and you meet him and he's just he's a regular guy you know mm. and, and it's like man he, he's one of those guys like the camera just eats him up I mean it just loves him man it just like, it gets into those eyes and you're like whoa same with you know? chris though chris, uh, oh no no chris he, of course he, chris, yeah chris, we yeah. Didn't, we haven't given him enough chris, love chris he is, is he is the heart and soul he of the is, picture. And he, he is pulls Steve it Rogers. off. He, he is he, Steve Rogers. He really is. And it's weird because right before the movie came out, he's like, I don't want to direct so much. I don't want to act so much anymore as I do want to direct and yeah. stuff. But it's weird with this. He's always been a really like, uh, I think a really cool actor. Uh, and he's found a way to like go into roles where he's pretty. He's fucking pretty or naturally pretty. Yeah. It's tough for a guy that pretty to disappear and shit. And I think he's been able to do that from time to time, place to place in some roles I've seen him in outside the Marvel Universe. But this fucking role here, man, is just like, dude, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Like, you got shit to do. Yeah. Look what you got in you, man. You just get some more material like this. Fucking go crazy. Yeah, I mean, how, how do you? I mean, it's 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 it's. I mean, yeah. When you, when you talk about you know a guy that's that pretty, uh, it's tough to be that pretty and yet be John Wayne. Yeah, he and he is he's John Wayne. He man. is I good mean, call. You know good call. I mean? Yeah, it's uh, better than John Wayne though. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's just but you that know, big. Yeah, he 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 commands it. He he is. You know, when when Cap when as Captain America, I mean, he he just embraces the role, um, and he commands your respect, but also your affection. That's yeah. the thing that like John Wayne would command your affection when he was being charming and shit like that. Yeah. But more often, than you were like, I'm scared of him because he looks like my grandfather. Right. But yeah. you don't get that with Chris <laughs> he's Evans. Gonna, he's gonna send, me, he's send me out to the backyard and pick out my own switch. Yeah. Beat my own ass. You know, no. When Chris says, "Hey, feed off the dash," yeah. you know what I mean? he's like, "All right, I understand." Yeah, it, it, there's a level of respect that he he just. You know, and again, it's that moment with Peggy. You know, where where, where he sits there, and, oh. and it it just he he uh, he he does. There, you know what it is. Also, it, it's because I I was imagining that moment where in, in the beginning of the movie with 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 with, with, with him and Anthony and and uh, and they talk about the uh, the jogging and 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 and, and Anthony says uh, so it's going to be like that, and he's like. It's gonna be like that, you know, and they and they has that they have that one little report and like that 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 is not an easy scene to play. And that's mm-hmm. not an easy moment to get between those two guys. Uh because it, it felt so natural and almost ad libbed and it, it's 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 just he just nails it, you yeah. know, and, 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 and you know, he for from you know, so now you have this guy again from the nineteen forties who's you know, very much a man of the time. And but but a second ago he was just, you know, you know, writing down you you know, know, one more thing onto the list, you know, which includes know. like, look up Steve Jobs, right. look up <laughs> this, yeah. look up that. He brought what was it? It's like uh, Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man. Or yeah, something Trouble like Man. Um, so, so yeah. Again, I, I just, I just, uh, not enough can be said about uh, about Chris and, and 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 the job he does. You know, in in this movie. You know, uh, aside from the fact that it's just you know pretty. Oh, <laughs> he is. I can't. He's super polite. I was on a tonight show with him once and he was like, so it, it, very nice guy. Captain America. First one I thought was a great movie too. It ended it, all of a sudden it ended. We're like, Oh shit. Um, because you know, you got to make him a man at a time before you get going and whatnot. But two, like it's not even like two blows it out the fucking water, but it does it. it, it and not in a shitty way. It's just, it's, it's, <clears throat> an insanely well yeah. uh, it's look it's part of the same thing all the heavy lifting and the setup has been done so doesn't mean whoever comes in next has an easy job of doing it because sometimes you set things set the table for people and they still shit on it and ruin the whole fucking meal but the people that you guys have set the table for joss and then the Rus- is it russo brothers yeah like both those are two occasions two examples where the table was set and they fucking like gave us a delicious goddamn meal and threw a few more play settings down and improved the dinner in a way but, we didn't know. But, you know, listen, you can't discount. I mean, you know, you, you, let's take Josh for, for an example. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when, when people talk about the, what, what Marvel did, right. The, the method of introducing, you know, each one of the characters individually before doing 
the bigger movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, what people forget is that everybody thought when we first started doing that, everybody thought that methodology was suicidal. Did they really? Everybody thought, no, the way you do it is you do the Avengers first, introduce these characters in a compelling, wonderful team scenario, and then you spin them out into their own smaller movies. Mm. That was the conventional thinking at the time. You know, that's the way you do it. Uh, you know, you break the franchises out after that. And, but that's so, so, you know, so now it looks like, oh, well, that's, that's the way you do, you, of course you do the plan that way. So, so, you know, and, and again, and the testimony to Joss is that now that you have these, now that you have these individual movies that have all had a really, <laughs> some, some really significant success, and you've got these stars that are all in the room, and you've got to write for each one of these stars and each one of these characters that each one have a fan base. That's tough, man. That is really, really tough. I mean, that is, you know, and I'm not even I'm not talking about personalities and stuff. I'm just talking about just all the pieces and, and you know, the idea of hurting cats and, uh, you know, that, that is not an easy, that is not an easy thing to do when you really think about just, just, just hurting folks. H E R D I N G. There are a bunch of people out there going, he's hurting cats now. Um, you know, just, just, just trying to just imagine writing that screenplay and, and putting those chess pieces together and then making it something that people go, wow, that's fun. And, yeah. and that's what and, I'm saying. The table know, was set and they could have shit on the table, yeah. but they didn't, or just give a stakeums, which actually I would have liked, but they, they went <laughs> above and beyond. Like those are two examples, the Avengers and Captain America winter soldier where yes, the table's been set, but fuck, did they lay out a goddamn delightful meal? Are you allowed uh, in your position to play favorites do you have like a descending order or a top three of marvel movies for you or is it like hey man fucking you're not allowed to say because it's like having kids and you love all your kids no, like, no you know I've, I've i've already i've publicly said in the past that actually you know what one of like even before captain america 2 which is mm. which is to me you know my favorite marvel movie right now my favorite marvel movie was was captain america one and and really yeah and but but i'll, I'll but let me say the, the reason is because it was it's it's strictly it's strictly nostalgic to me because something about Captain America one you know the opening the, the music uh, the way that Joe Johnston you know just 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 the whole thing about it, it reminded me of all the great movies of my child of not necessarily my childhood but my 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 very sort of you know influential period of, of watching movies it reminded me of Raiders it reminded me of Donner Superman it reminded me, it had, it had all those touchstones for me so yeah. that's why I, I from a like, guy who touched a lot of those movies right. right so so i i really so when i watch that movie i just get that like you know sort of like warm like ah oh, yeah this is comfortable you know i mean i'm, I'm like in a comfortable woolly sheet you know right, right, right. And, 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 a, and a blanket and i'm and i'm and i'm really digging it that way so so i've always liked captain america 2 from that point of view you know and uh and you know when he puts the plane down he's yes. talking to peggy yeah you know, like, it's emotional like, it's uh, yeah you know and, 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 it's, and it's and it's corny and i love mm. it and you know and, and, and like you know i'm just shoving the popcorn in my mouth and i'm like oh my god i'm bowling and that like, line dude where he's like i just don't like bullies yeah and, oh that, that that whole thing that whole conversation with erskine and mm. and where he pour where he pours the the schnapps and 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 then they he says cheers oh no no not for you you can't drink <laughs> you know, that whole thing you know they, there's all those those uh those wonderful little bits of business that uh and skinny steve you know just just which they bring back in Captain America yeah, too. There's yeah. a flashback sequence. You get to see yeah, little, Skinny Steve. A little, little bit of Skinny Steve goes a long way, man. Um, so, so yeah. So I, I've always said the Cap Two was my favorite, and and but again, that that's my caveat. It's just that it, it, it just you know it's it's uh it's the uh, the flashback to me. You know, the Skinny me actually. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that well, uh, they took uh, fucking Skinny you, yeah, and they put you in that Marvel machine. They pumped you full of fucking Super Soldier Serum, and look what you've been able to accomplish. Man. Yeah, it's it, fucking it, crazy, and continue if, to if, do. If, if this is what Super Soldier Serum does, I don't recommend. It. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, you did great, man. So, put on a show behind the show. Yeah, like you were smart to do it. Look what it's done for a comics, b Marvel, and c your career. You were very smart to do what yeah. you did. Thank you.